This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham and I have got Catherine Ball with me. You are a registered physiotherapist. Yep. You are the owner of Perth Physiotherapy Wellness Center and Fitness Studio. Yep. And you just opened a animal rehab. You're a busy lady. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you've been doing physiotherapy for 25 years. Yeah, I trained in England and emigrated to Canada in 1999. And my first job was at the Perth and Smith Falls District Hospital. So I was there for nine years um, and then opened up my own clinic so I could have a better balance with raising my three children. Um, and I have a big passion for animals and I recently completed my canine rehabilitation diploma and my equine rehabilitation diploma, which qualifies me to work with animals, um, dogs and horses. Okay, okay. Yeah. So maybe we'll talk more about the animals okay. today. Okay, yep. Uh, we have to have you come back because you do so much, but okay. the, the animals too. Animal rehab. Let's talk about why would an animal come in to get re re rehab? Ah, uh, so the dogs I often see. Um, so my caseload right now, I have a pug who had myelopathy, so he has um, like a degenerative spinal cord injury. Um, so we're working on his balance and his strength. He did go into wheels, like little wheelchair wheels, um, and then he got strong enough that he doesn't need them anymore. Um, I've got a dog, a big working sheep dog with an ACL tear in their knee. Um, we do post-op rehab after surgeries, so some dogs end up having their ligaments repaired in their knees, the bigger dogs. Um, I have um, little wiener dogs that I treat with spinal cord injuries because their, their, their spine's so long and thin, they get compression just like humans do. So typically the animals are referred by a vet or an owner will reach out and we look at their, their gait, the way they move, we assess, just like we would with a human, assess their strength, their range of motion, test their ligaments, assess their neurological functioning, and then come up with a plan of how we can help them. Okay, and so, then you mentioned the pug, and I know yes. like, there's, tip, there's some animals that typically have trouble with yes. their hips, like a golden retriever, I think they Yeah, some are predisposed getting... to hip dysplasia, which is basically arthritic changes in the hip. If the, the joint of the hip isn't nice and deep, it'll, it'll wear out more prematurely. Um, yeah, some breeds just weren't quite as well bred or they've been bred too quickly for popularity. So they, they have issues that haven't been bred out of them, like some of the more mature breeds. So Right, right. Yeah. right. Now, do you get a referral from a veterinarian? Can you just bring your dog yeah, in you can, he's walking? Yeah, so some people just reach out and they will come um, make an appointment with me and we book the assessment. Um, if, they've, if they've seen a vet for that problem, I will reach out to the vet um, because I like to see the x-rays. I like to get a report of their history. And we're not vets. We're physiotherapists that are trained to to rehab and help humans move well and and we've basically taken those skills learned how a horse the horse anatomy a dog anatomy how they function how they move and then we're applying our physio skills to the animal so we're not a vet just like we work with family doctors we're not doctors we're not pharmacists we have our own profession and physiotherapists work with animals in the same way so we become like in a, with the horse industry i work with the trainers the coaches, the vet, the farrier, the saddle fitter, and then I, I will come in, and what I love to do the best is assess a rider and a human, um, like a, a rider, a human with their horse, look at how they're moving together, and then you can see where one might compensate for the other, and then I can treat the human and treat the horse, and then you put them back together, because not intentionally, but they'll help. The, if, a, if a human has a tight right side of their back, then the horse is gonna free themselves up more, and so they, you can kind of, you, you can get great results by looking at them together, because when you're jumping and showing, you're one, and you need to move as one, and so. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. And that's a, that's a separate part of, of horseback yes. riding. I was telling you earlier, I do social work. Yes. And we have people with disability, physical disabilities, yeah. who ride horses because of that. Yeah, because the way exactly. I, I, the way I was taught was you, if you're riding on a horse, you're, you should be using the same muscles. Exactly. You may not be able to walk or have good yeah. mobility. But once you get on a horse, you should be walking yeah. and using those yeah. muscles. So the way a horse's pelvis moves mm -hmm. and the way they have to free up the hip to bring their leg forwards mimics how a human should walk. So if you have a child with cerebral palsy or some neurological injury that makes them very tight in their hips and they have high tone and you put them on a horse and they can relax around it, it lowers their tone and then the, the walking of the horse can facilitate and teach the child or the adult's brain like how to use and how to use their muscles more normally. So it, it's magic and that's... It really is. Yeah. It really yeah. is because it, it's like you say, it is magic because yeah. you're getting the physical therapy yeah. and just the animal connection with some people is amazing. Yeah, horses have big hearts and big souls and they're not judging you. They're just there in the moment, just like dogs are always in the present moment. So you can 
you know, like you can magically bring a child who's very excited and then have them just come down to the energy level of Absolutely. the dog. Um, so way in the future, I would like to do like assisted therapy. So I would maybe be the animal handler and have a psychotherapist or a social worker do counseling while grooming a horse or while um, petting the dog. And so. I, you, you must see that an awful lot. Too. Yeah. It's just that, that, that calmness and animal yeah. brings to, to people, yeah. anybody really, yeah, you know, exactly. you're petting, yeah. you know, you're coming home and that animal's waiting for you behind the door yeah, and you just, you're waiting yeah. for that for yeah. sure, for sure. It's joy. So w would you, um, cause you're using the word assessment, do you yeah. get a diagnosis? Um, and then you do an assessment? Or? So sometimes it's just the horse is lame or the okay. horse won't pick up the right lead canter or the horse is, is stuck in its back or there's just its necks off or its, its, its tail is cocked to one side. So off, then I'll go in and assess and I'll observe the horse like, um, like walk, trot, canter in a straight line and in circles. Um, and then when they, then they would come inside the barn and look at, like I'll assess their range of motion in their, their limbs, feel along their spine, assess the joint play. Um, and then you're just building a picture of what's going on and horses give very good feedback like dogs do to pain. So if you mm -hmm. learn to read their body, they can't speak, but they can certainly let you know. And some people say, are you hurting the animals? Is it painful? And it's not. You have to have the cooper cooperation of the animal. So we use a lot of food and treats like doing carrot stretches with the horses. So leading their head. Yes. Um, same with dogs. You use a lot of treats to get them to go over like hurdles or under things. and. I have this little licky mat, so if I'm lasering or doing acupuncture on a dog and I want them to stay still, I put like treats in this mat and it takes them 10 minutes to lick that out while I'm working on them. And most, most owners will say when they bring their dog to physio, they leap out the car and they're excited to see me and, and they, cause they know I'm helping them. So it's not like a vet, like some, not all dogs are afraid of vets, but it's a different atmosphere. Absolutely. There's, yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, when I think of a horse, like even a healthy, healthy horse, yeah. That's how much does a, house, a horse weigh? Oh, that's a very good question. Well, and I mean, a all those bones, <laughs> that bo those, their bones and their back are holding that yeah. up. So even a healthy horse is holding up. Yeah, and they're built for that. Like they mm -hmm. have strong ligaments and strong tendons. Um, but a lot of the horses I work with, they're like athletes. So just like a hockey athlete or a sprinter is more likely to get injured because they're pushing themselves more. And then they need rehab to get them back to their game quicker. If in like now we're starting to ramp up towards show season. Um, so it starts in like May, but so now the horses are, they're starting to jump higher. And so we're, it, it shows up little issues. So I, I work with the trainers, um, to, to fix a little problem with the horse and then it can jump higher and it can, you know, have the endurance and, and a happy horse will ride well, whereas an unhappy horse will clearly let the rider know that get off. Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, absolutely. And that's got to be a big part of it. Well, they, they may think that the horse has got a problem when it's really the rider. Yes. Yeah. And that's, yeah, there's a big balance in that. That's so, a, yeah. a hard communication to have. I'm sure the horse is fine. But yes. Yeah. You need to work on your, yeah, your the, body yeah. structure. And oh, that's wow. the, the beauty of working with trainers and mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's their job. Yes. To train yeah. And we people. work together. That's and right. Yeah. That's I'm, right. I'm, I ride as well. So I, I have to put myself in the student role as well and just be told, you know, so it's, right. I've learned a lot about horses from riding. Okay. So I was going to yeah. ask, what's your background with animals and you're a rider yeah, as well? Yeah. So I love dogs. I had a beautiful lab who tore her ACL and a big ligament in her knee and I rehabbed her. And that was my first dog when I first came to Canada. And now I have a Bernadoodle. So I didn't, wow. I grew up with rabbits and hamsters and little animals. I was never allowed a big animal. And then I fell in love with riding over COVID and my kids have grown up and started riding once a week and then twice a week and three times a week and then a half lease and then a purchase. Oh yes, yes. <laughs> so I have a big, beautiful Dutch warm blood called Iggy. Wow. So nice. I ride him four days a week. So I just being around all the horses has taught me a lot about how they move and their muscles and how they function. And, so. and even like when I, when I think of, uh, of being a veterinarian, like yeah. when I was little, you know, I had little Scotch Terriers, I had little yeah. poodles, that sort of thing. We weren't talking ACLs and no. surgeries and everything back there. So, I mean, we're talking 50, 60 years ago. We never have that. Nowadays, it's like there's just so much has, you know. Yeah, I think veterinary medicine's really evolved. Yes. And what's available in the human world is becoming available in the veterinary world. Really? And I think people love their animals like their children now. And they, if their dog can't walk or their dog can't go down the stairs or their dog can't get in and out the car, 
they, they, they know that they can improve their quality of life with veterinary care and physio. So people, they just don't give up on their animals as right. quickly now. And if you've got a lot invested in a horse that you want to show or you're leasing or your child's riding that horse, you're, you, you want it to stay functional and happy and healthy. But if you can help it live its best life, because I think humans are finally grateful for what the animals do for us. So right. the human then doesn't want to see their little dog suffer. So if we can make that dog more comfortable and physio can help reduce medication. So if, if you're, the, you know, we're concerned if an animal's been on like long-term pain meds or anti-inflammatories because of their organs. So if that can be reduced because they can build up their core strength and, you know, help support their own spine, they won't be in as much pain. So. I, I really like the example you just said too, because yeah. uh, you, you, you're, they become part of the family, yeah. you know, and you don't want to see them struggle or be in pain. Yeah. And now this is just another alternative. Yeah. Instead of we watching, can help it, them. You, you know, people don't want to put their animal down. So no. they, they, they unfortunately watch them struggle, but now yeah, but we can, can help them yes. and, you know, help them live their best life. Right. And, right. Yeah. Right. So, right. Right. Yeah. Now you've got two locations. One is for your yeah. humans, one's for animals. Yeah. So in Perth, <laughs> Um, on Rogers Road, we're saying up near the fairgrounds, I have a human physiotherapy clinic. And then the farm where I ride is called Tay Valley Farm. It's in Stanleyville. And I bought a couple of acres off them and built a little um, purpose-built animal rehab clinic. So it, it's on site there. I'm going to build a dog run in the spring and want to have agility um, and do some outdoor rehab with hill. I've built some hills and kind of do circuit training for dogs outside and then they I treat them inside and then I can look out the window and see the horses so I can then go and over and treat a few horses and then I travel to other barns to treat horses too. Okay so, now you mentioned yeah. acupuncture for animals as well. Yeah so they yeah. respond really really well so really? horses do and dogs do and people are surprised by how calm the dogs can become so there's points that kind of really mellow them out um, yeah, and it's brilliant for pain. You can do dry needling if there's a, a knot in a muscle. You can put an acupuncture needle in and just um, like poke it around a little bit basically and then it can release the spasm and then it can free up the limb to move. And we never leave them in if the dog doesn't want them in, but often they'll just melt into the ground and wow. lie there. I had treated a collie, a working sheep dog last week who the, is a farm dog. The owner wasn't sure how it would respond and it just, it lay there and just leaned on me and wow. let me acupuncture one side and we rolled him over and did the other and it was... That, that's amazing because yeah. you or I as humans know there's going to be a needle going in. I'm yeah, they don't know that. And yeah. they don't know. It's yeah. like, what are you doing? So you distract <laughs> them, like yeah. you distract them and the owner keeps them busy and then you mm -hmm. just tap it in and sometimes they'll go like that, but they don't. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. So. Wow. Yeah, wow, that's wow. cool. So for more information, how do people learn about you? Uh, so I'm just about to launch my website. Nice. So it's I'm Perth Physio Animal Rehab and I'm on Instagram and Facebook and um, yeah, and then by my cell number, can I say it? Yep. It's 613-390-0544. But if you just Google like Perth Physio Animal Rehab or Perth Animal Rehab will pop up. Um, yeah, so I'm slowly building all my social media side and word of mouth and we've been out visiting vets and and some people just call the human clinic and say hey is that lady doing dogs or so you can reach Perth physiotherapy wonderful too, so. wonderful yeah. we we'll have to have you come back maybe you can bring a dog with you I would love time. to bring a dog Show with us some me examples of some physio yeah. that you have to do yeah, yeah I would love that very much that'd be awesome well Kay. thank you very much Catherine Ball physio registered physiotherapist owner of uh, Perth physiotherapy uh, wellness Center and physio and fitness center. Yeah. My goodness, a mouthful. And uh, you do animal rehab now too. Perfect. Wow. Yes. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very much for having back. me. Thank you. Okay. Bye.